If you have an older computer and Windows 10 is slowing it down, you may want to try a Linux distro that's light on your computer resources and is easy to use. My last video I previewed Linux Mint. This time I'm previewing MX Linux, a light distro based on the SXFCE desktop environment and on another distro, Debian. A very nice combination. This is the MX Linux website. Explore MX19 takes you to a slideshow of its features and to the right is a link to a YouTube video. Down to the download bar that takes you to the download page and here you have a choice of two different versions either a 32-bit uh, which you might want to download if your computer is older than 10 years or a 64-bit. If we scroll down further you have a link to mirrors where you can download MX Linux <clears throat> or torrent files where you can download a torrent file which will allow you to download MX Linux. Below that are some notes, some good information for you to look at. So let's look at MX Linux. This is our brand new install of MX Linux. We have the MX welcome screen, which is a good place to start. There are sources of information, the frequently asked questions, forums, user manual, videos, wiki, uh, all kinds of interesting evening reading and contribute. It's always a good idea to give what you can to a great project to keep the development going. Tools takes us to MX Tools and MX Linux is all about tools and settings enough to change your system to your desires. Codecs to download and install advanced codecs for video and music. Tweak and popular apps which we will take a look at a little later. You can uncheck the box if you don't want the welcome screen to come up again. On the desktop there's a conky display reflecting the percentages of hard drive, memory, and CPU resources that are being used and the time. The panel is located on the left, oddly enough, but we can change that if we go to Tweak, go to the Panel tab. The second box down says Display Panel Lyrically on the left. If we go above that, Display Panel Horizontally on the bottom. Hit Apply. and the tab moves magically to the bottom. Nice. But for now, let's change that back. There, cool. So on the panel, on the very top, we have a shutdown button or log out, the time, and icon to show what's open right now. A shortcut to Firefox, which is the default browser. Access to files. A volume control. Update manager. And green means that there are upda updates available. To unmount to drive. Icon to show how much power is in the battery right now. And this is your icon that shows that you're connected to the internet. A clip manager. Change desktops. And the menu. Well, this is a menu window. Let's take a look at this. There is favorites recently used. A listing of all the applications that are available. And below that, the applications listed in categories. And in accessories, there's a number of different accessories, including a conky toggle, 
which can be used to turn the Conky display off and on. And it's off. And back on. In graphics, we have GIMP, which is a image manipulation program. Nomax to be able to view images. Internet multimedia, which includes a CD ripper a video player and a program to burn CDs and DVDs. But let's look at pulse volume control. Now this is interesting. The pulse volume control can be used to control the volume above 100% and back down. And that is for output devices. Now the volume control in the panel will not go above 100%. So if you want to uh, watch videos or listen to music over 100%, you can use the pulse volume control. And to do that, or to make it convenient, you can go back into multimedia, right click on audio, uh, pulse audio volume control, and add to the panel, and then use it to control your volume. There's MX tools, a number of different tools that are very, very useful. Um, there's a MX package installer, which we'll look at a little bit later. And a number of other different tools. Office, which includes Libre Office Suite. And this is compatible with Microsoft Office and its formats. Settings, number of different settings, which are also very handy. And in this, you'll find the Synaptic Package Manager, which can be used to install and uninstall applications, but it's not quite as easy to use as the uh, MX Package Installer. But like I said, we'll look at that a little bit later. <clears throat> And in system, a number of different tools there to use too. There's a GW package installer, which can be used to install packages that you might download from the internet. And the very bottom is a XFCE terminal, which can be used to put commands into the system. Um, when you hover over the applications, you'll see that it tells you what the application is and what it's used for, which is very nice. Let's look at the menu window and the very top. There are shortcuts to all settings, lock screen, switch users, and the shutdown or the logout button. Let's look at the settings and here there are a number of different settings you can use to customize your MX Linux distro. Uh, there is appearance where you can change the theme to dark or lighter or a number of different settings in between. There is MX Tweak which we used before to change the location of the panel. Um, there is a display where you can change the resolution. And all these other settings that uh, you can take a look at. But if that isn't overwhelming enough, there is MX tools, which are some customized tools that the MX Linux developer team came up with. And in this there's a, all these different tools that are very handy, um, including the package installer. And by the way, all these, the settings and the MX tools are 
mostly all on the menu listing too, but uh, let's look at the package installer. Need our password. In here, there are different tabs for different areas where you can install or uninstall packages. There's popular applications, a listing of applications that are the most popular deemed by the MX Linux team. And these are stable, uh, all stable applications. There's stable repro, which includes more applications that you can install that are all stable. MX test repro, and these may not be quite as stable, and there is a warning that will tell you that if you do install these, that uh, you're doing that at your own risk, and they may not be as stable as uh, the other two tabs. There's Debian backports, which come directly from the Debian package. And these may not be quite as stable either as a stable uh, repro or popular applications. <clears throat> and there are flat packs, which are the most recent of applications, which also may not be quite as stable as the first two tabs. <clears throat> Something else I wanted to show you on the menu window. This can be resized if you go to the corner, can move it up or wider so that uh, you don't have to scroll down quite as far or not at all in some of the different windows. A really nice feature in MX Linux. One more thing I wanted to show you in MX Linux version 19 is the amount of computer resources it actually uses. And if we go to the terminal, type in free space hyphen H, enter. And it shows you that right now without any applications running, it's using 422 megabytes of computer resources which is not bad at all considering Windows 10 uses well over a gigabyte. Uh, very nice. MX Linux is a free and open operating system, an excellent choice to replace Windows, especially since Microsoft support for Windows 7 is ending in January 2020. MX Linux includes most of the software you need to get up and running straight away. You can browse the internet listen to music, watch videos, peruse your photos, even work with Microsoft Office documents. Windows users can feel right at home with MX Linux, so check it out at the MX Linux website and switch today. I'm planning more videos about Linux, Windows software, uh, whatever crazy ideas enter my head. So subscribe, either hit the icon the Raygun icon or hit the subscribe button below. Like and add comments below. Thank you. See ya.